everybody, my name is Jessica Seitz. I am a registered nurse. I have been a labor and delivery nurse actually for the last 20 years now, and I absolutely love my job. One of the things that I love most about my job is the ability that I have to be there for people and patients when they feel uncertain and feel vulnerable. And right now is one of those times more than ever with the current crisis that we're having um, in this country. So I feel like I've been asked a lot of questions um, at work from pregnant patients and I'm sure that you guys have a lot of questions too. So I'd love to help and answer some of them. That is a really good question. Um, pregnant women, currently there is not enough data to truly say whether pregnant people are more at risk during this crisis, but what we do know is that pregnant patients are already immunocompromised. That is because they're supporting another being, another life system in their body. So they are already um, immunocompromised, meaning that um, they're less able to fight off infections or viruses. So whether that puts them more at risk at contracting it, there's not quite enough data yet, but I would say that most pregnant patients need to err on the side of caution because um, you are seen as one of those um, risk categories as being more immunocompromised. If it were my baby, I feel like babies are more at risk in my opinion because it's somebody that you just wanna swaddle up and you just wanna love. Innately, um, as a mother and as a nurturer, feel more um, protective over them, I guess you would say. So in that sense, yes, but in a medical standpoint, I guess if you wanna say it that way, I wouldn't say that babies are more at risk of um, having a worse outcome. Um, I do know that babies do have to have some more invasive testing um, to find out whether they have been um, diagnosed with the condition or not. In that sense, they might be slightly more um, at risk just for uncomfortable procedures. And the simple answer is I do not feel like prenatal visits have changed that much during um, this current issue that's going on. It's the fact that pregnant women have to be seen. You can't get around that. Um, it's not something that you can do via uh, telemedicine over the computer. There's no way to get around it. There's testing that has to be done. You have to be able to auscultate fetal heart tones. You have to be able um, at times to do non-stress tests on the baby and monitor the baby's heart rate that way. And also you have to be able to physically get, lay your hands on the, on the patient. You need to be able to measure their abdomen, do, do testing on them, blood pressure. So unfortunately, um, there has not been a huge change in this other than what we are seeing is maybe possibly some upcoming changes where there are less people in the office. Maybe you just deal one-on-one -on -one with um, one nurse that does all of this, and then the physician um, possibly could come on via um, telehealth um, and speak to the patient that way and get all the information from the nurse and then um, be able to assess the patient via computer so there's not quite so many staff and quite so many doctors all at the same time, but I don't think that we're quite there yet. One of the ways that a pregnant mom can stay healthy during all of this, it's really simple. It's following the standard um, guidelines like we just described, um, trying to avoid and putting yourself in situations um, that could make you more susceptible um, to contracting this. Um, but also, you well, you wanna do the things that um, any mom would do. You wanna maintain your visits. You wanna eat a healthy diet. You wanna make sure that you're taking your prenatal vitamins. Um, and also, the emotional support. That's really important with all the stress and everything that's going on is having an outlet, having somebody to talk to. Maybe um, other moms, other support groups, people that can relate to what you're going through and how you're feeling. And maybe if you're feeling uncertain, having somebody to bounce those ideas ideas off of because that can help um, also make your pregnancy more comfortable and make you overall more healthy. If a pregnant woman contracts this um, healthcare crisis that we're dealing with right now, should they be doing things differently? That's a really good question. Um, the answer to that is 
not necessarily in the sense of um, they need to up their visits, they need to, you know, up appointments, but obviously everybody needs to be aware of what's going on. Um, their physician needs to be aware that they have tested positive. The pregnant mother is going to want to be very visual of things um, that would signify to them um, that they need to call their physician or get to the hospital. And those would be like monitoring your temperature. Um, because obviously if your fever gets high, that can have um, an increased heart rate. Um, it can affect your baby's heart rate as well. And we would wanna make sure that the baby is not in distress from that. Um, also, if a mom has contracted the virus and is feeling extremely short of breath, um, not able to get good um, oxygenation in can have an effect on your pregnancy and on your fetus. So that would be another reason that you would possibly need to get to the hospital or call your physician sooner. Um, but aside from those things, the pregnant patient would want to be watched just the same um, as any other patient. What protocols are in place currently um, in hospitals or in any delivering environment um, currently with this um, healthcare crisis? So basically, let's say that a pregnant mom has gone into labor and she is known um, that she's positive. Um, what that the hospital or facility usually does, and every place is a little bit different, but the guidelines pretty much um, are that it doesn't mean that a mom has to have a cesarean section. She can still have a vaginal delivery, um, but some things would change. Um, normally, they've been advocating for delayed cord clamping um, and delivery so that there can be um, more of a return of blood flow back to baby from um, the placenta. That would be um, something that would be um, removed from the scenario um, because we don't want to have the baby um, that close to mom for an exposed um, period of time. So the cord clamping would be done a lot faster. Um, also, um, we usually encourage bringing baby immediately to the mom's chest, um, and unfortunately the baby would be taken um, away and um, isolated temporarily until we could get um, further testing done on the baby and on um, the mom. So all the factors are a little bit different, depends on when mom got infected, um, how long she's been sick, um, and whether the baby in turn tests positive um, after the delivery. being routinely screened to see if they um, have contracted this current crisis during their prenatal visits. Um, the answer to that is currently no. Um, some hospitals are leaning towards um, when you were actually admitted, like let's say you are admitted into labor or you're admitted to the hospital for a high risk um, type thing during your pregnancy, like uh, your diabetes is out of control or your, high blood, um, your blood pressure is high. Um, they will screen you once you've been admitted. That is a lot of hospitals and that also does um, vary depending on if they have the supplies available to do that. Um, but usually when a mom just goes for a doctor's visit, they are not routinely testing them. Um, if the mom comes in is seen in triage for a quick in and out type of thing, they're not routinely testing. But I would say that it does vary from facility to facility. If a pregnant woman were to contract this issue currently, um, would that necessarily mean that it, the baby would be also infected? Um, and the answer to that is studies are showing that not necessarily. Not all babies are going to be um, infected um, just because a mother has tested positive. And the reason they are seeing studies are showing that after testing um, breast milk or amniotic fluid, they're not finding that it's being transferred um, from the mom into these secretions. There have been a couple isolated events um, that they have after delivery that the mother was positive and they tested the placenta. They have found um, in a couple of post-delivered moms that they were able to pick up this issue in the placental tissue. But I would say for the most part, they are finding that it's not immediately um, transferred. Another 
other question is, a mom that has contracted this issue, would antibodies immediately be transferred over to um, their baby? And the answer to that is not necessarily no. Um, and the reason for that being is we don't really understand currently how much um, antibodies are needed to actually have an anti uh, an antibody load um, that is high enough to actually transfer. Studies are showing that those um, antibodies can be passed through breast milk. So as soon as it is possible um, to be able to breastfeed the baby, um, it is good if a mom is you know, out of that positive window that enough time has passed and she can't actually infect her baby, but it would be good to pass those antibodies onto the baby through the breast milk. So there's a fine line in making sure that it's safe enough to have the newborn um, with the mom and that there's been enough weeks. So I hope that I have helped answer some of these questions um, that have been burning in your mind. Um, and I thank you guys for listening.